for you for a while. They've, they've been here. There have been people here for like two hours waiting for you. Oh, hello, everyone. <laughs> All right, well, everybody have a seat. Let's get comfortable. We're going to spend the next six hours together. That's good. <laughs> Well, how you doing? I'm good, man. I, I'm so happy to be here. It's amazing to see everyone. And I'm in South Africa. What's going on? Have this you been amazing. to South Africa before? I have. I worked here. I worked in Cape Town in 2009 on a television show called The Prisoner. Um, and yeah, we were in Cape Town for about three months and Namibia for about two. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, well, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I, clearly, there are uh, just a couple people here. Uh, any uh, Stranger Things fans in the house? So he told me backstage he doesn't want to answer any questions about Stranger Things. We're only going to talk about his early work, The Prisoner. That's it. Twilight, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so hey man, so let's, uh, I know we're going, to, we're going to go to some questions from the audience, but uh, what, I'd like to always start with this question. You're on a set, you're working with a famous director, what's the first thing you grab at the craft services table? Goodness, uh, chocolate, always chocolate or coffee. Coffee's a big thing for me. I've got to stay. Yeah, woo to coffee. <laughs> yeah, coffee keeps me going throughout the day. Uh, yeah. All right, and also I see that you uh, played the violin. When I was very young. Yeah, well done you. We, yeah. we, we dug deep. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I didn't no. do this. Yeah, I started playing the violin when I was about, I don't know, I think I must have been about three or four. Um, and I learned via a method called Suzuki method. So you learn by ear rather than by reading the music. Correct. Yeah. The cello, it was... I picked the cello because I knew I'd never have to stand up to play it. I was a lazy kid. I could see you as a cello. You cellist. always have to have a chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It so it's a bit relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> so from 2015 to 2020, you were a front man of a band called Counterfeit. That's right. So then was, like you. <laughs> what, was music your first career choice? Was that your first... Uh, your, you, clearly violin? Front man. I think I always knew that I like I wanted to do entertainment and performance in some way. Um, I was the kid growing up that would like go on shows for our parents and would make them watch me do silly little performances in our living room. Um, and I always just had an inclination to perform because it was where I felt the most free. It's where I felt like myself. I felt comfortable. Um, I started, you know, playing music when I was very very young. But then when I was about nine or ten, we, uh, my parents moved to a small town outside of London and I started doing local youth theatre stuff and local youth music theatre work particularly. So all of a sudden, sort of these passions that I had to both perform uh, as an actor and as a musician sort of collided in this one big explosion. And it was there that I just felt like myself, I think. I always felt very free. So. It neither was like a first choice, I just knew I wanted to perform in some way. Alright, so clearly, fan of music. Yeah. So if you could play any musical artist in a movie or a TV show, which musical artist would that be? Oh god, I don't know. So a lot of people who said David Bowie, like that might be kind of cool, I think. Yeah. <laughs> that might be fun. Um, I, it would always fill me with fear, playing a musician. I, or particularly somebody who's alive or, or, you know, has been alive, I think that would just be a terrifying experience. So, but David Bowie, yeah, that's where I go with it. Yeah. Alright. So you had a, a career, you started with Sweeney Todd. <laughs> Twilight. <laughs> Mortal Instruments. <laughs> Some Harry Potter stuff. Just basically just trying to get them to woo a whole yeah. lot. It's very, very well. And then we, we get into Stranger Things, which yes. is you know, very, very popular. Yes. So, uh, we want to go back to Twilight? Twilight, yeah, there you go. We got you. We, we go back there. Let's talk about that experience. That was amazing. I, I, I mentioned recently in an interview, um, when they were first making the Twilight movies or talking about making them, I was approached by Summit Entertainment, uh, who made the, made the movies, to maybe you know consider auditioning for the role of, of Edward. Um, and at the time, yeah, it, it wouldn't have worked out. Let's be honest. But you know, nice to be thought of nonetheless. Um, 
and uh, and at the time it just wasn't the right timing. I couldn't get in for the audition. It just wasn't working out. So when they came back to make New Moon, uh, they called me up and they were like, "Do you want to come in and audition for you know a member of the Volturi?" Uh, I was like, "I'd love to. I, that would be great." Yeah. So I was very lucky. I felt very blessed to be a part of that movie and that series, and it was a very like eye-opening experience because it was so popularly, you know, it was such a cultural phenomenon, you know, and, and to be sort of on the outskirts and on the periphery of that sort of looking in was really, really fascinating and really interesting. But, you know, on the last movie, there were 72 numbered and named cast members. We were all basically living in this one hotel in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and it was, it was awesome. It was like being at kids camp. It was fucking great. <laughs> So you've had the opportunity to work with a lot of a lot of different different actors and actresses out. Were there any in particular that either gave you really great advice or, or something that just really hit home with you? Well, I mean, I, I mentioned this show, The Prisoner, that I worked on in, in Cape Town, and, and um, that was with Ian McKellen, um, who you know is is an amazing artist and an amazing actor and a wonderful person and. He really showed me, I think, how to be working and be on set. And he's so gracious and so kind and so generous as a as a person and as an actor. And to see that as you know, I was like 19 at the time. I just started working, and this goes for pretty much everyone I work with too. You know, the, the, just to understand that in order to make something that's really good, you have to be part of a team. That, to me, has always stayed with me. You know, it's never... I think a lot of actors go, well, I'm, I hate to speak generally, but I think some actors go to work and think, oh, it's just me, I'm just here to do the job, and, and then they do their thing and they, you know, leave. Whereas I really now understand that, like, you know, the focus puller is so important, the grip is so important, and it's just like, I, I love everything about it. I love being in the nitty-gritty and the minutiae of of filmmaking, so, um, but Ian was a, was a lifelong friend, and is a lifelong friend, and, and I'm, yeah, very lucky and fortunate to know him and work with him. That's awesome. So you've played lots of different roles. Which one has been your most challenging? I would probably say uh, Henry and Vecna. Yeah, that, that's been... Too far. Has everyone sort of finished the series? How? Yeah. I'm looking around to see if anyone's going. No, shut up! Don't say anything. Uh, you know, working on this show with Matt and Ross, who are so smart, and the way that they write is so pure and beautiful. When you get a script like that, it makes you, makes me as an actor, really want to give every single part of my being. Um, and Henry has such an interesting journey throughout the show, you know, particularly from episodes four to seven, that I really had to track that and I had to make sure that there was always this truth that was underneath whatever outside, I hate to use the word facade, but it's the only word I can come up with right now, this sort of outside facade. And, uh, and, and that was really interesting as an actor because often what you're doing is the words on the page, uh, you know, they have their intention and they have their meaning and that's what you're saying given your experience. Whereas the things that he's saying, yes, they're coming from experience, but underneath that at all times is this like burning fire and burning rage. So to build that up and to track that was really, really fun. It was just a total blessing. And then for Vecna, you know, just like simple, like little things, learning how to do that flipping voice, you know, that was hard enough. You know, I spent, I spent hours of my life learning how to do that. So, yeah, <laughs> no, I'm, no, 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 no. no. Maybe, to, maybe tomorrow when I feel a bit more... <laughs> well, where did, you, where did you travel from to be here today? I, we traveled from London. I was in London. I was meant to come from Los Angeles, but I had to, I had to take a quick trip uh, to London before 
before this. So, so where, where is your body currently acclimated when it comes to time? My body is here. My soul is here. My mind is here. I'm here. I'm with you. I think it's... I don't even know what time it is for me right now. So I'm still trying to figure that out. I'm definitely hitting the, uh, the jet lag. So you've been uh, cast as villains fairly frequently. Uh, do you enjoy that? And do you find that difficult? Because you seem like a very lovely... A lovely human. I mean, everybody here has fallen in love with you. Am I'm I right? I'm in love with you all too. Um, <laughs> I love playing the villain. I think for me, like, often the, 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 the villain character or the character of contention has a lot of depth to them and they have a lot of history and I find that to be really fascinating. I love to dive into the mentality of any character that I'm playing and I, you know I have played nice people who are just sort of going through the experience that they're you know that they're faced with at any given moment but there's something about having that origin story that for me is so fulfilling I just I just like I love it I always have and I think I always will and there's a lot of truth in that and I also find that writers get to really express themselves quite freely in villain characters and they get to put a lot of personal trauma into those characters and for me that's really fun and it's so nice when I read something that's got a lot of truth to it that often in daily life we can't say out loud, you know? Yeah. Well, because the villain doesn't realize they're the villain most of the time. Well, no, I mean, the villain doesn't, and as an actor, you know, as I'm sure you all know, because we're all here because we love stories, right? Like, we're all here because we love worlds, yeah? We love, we love to immerse ourselves in, 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 in something that feels greater than ourselves, and potentially something that, um, that, that also shows us how we can be and how we can treat each other in life, a sort of utopia, as it were. And as an actor, when I read a villain character, I don't see them as the bad guy. I have to see them, and I have to love them, and I have to nurture them, and I have to understand them. Because if I don't like them, then I'm not going to enjoy doing what I'm going to do. And that's going to translate, and nobody's going to enjoy watching it if I'm not enjoying playing it. Um, so, so yeah, I never, I've never seen, I never saw Henry or Vecna as as a as a character who, who was bad. I um, I saw him as a as a product of his environment, and I mean, if I'm being really honest about it, I think he's also, you know, he's deeply manipulated and and, and bullied, and and that's why he becomes the person that he becomes. That and also Eleven doing what she does to him in episode seven. Yeah. That's, but that's a minor detail, it's a minor detail. So, we're playing back now. It takes uh, a little bit of time to get into character, including the time it physically takes to get into character. Yeah. Talk about that experience. Well, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if any of you or how many of you have seen uh, a, a little video that Netflix put out of when I first went to go and you know, do the fitting with Barry Gower who made, or Barry and his team, who made uh, the prosthetic suit for Vecna. Uh, you know, before then I'd probably been into Barry's workshop twice for a full body mold. Uh, and then I went there one day and the suit was completely unpainted. It was just like white and purple. But the moment I put it on, I just felt like I was becoming this character and it was so much fun it was so great there's so many of you out here you know obviously in cosplay and that's it's the same thing you put on that suit you put on that costume and you're like oh my god i'm yes i'm, I'm this person it's fantastic and i felt like that and i say in the video on my barry i think i'm in love and i and i really did feel like that i was so grateful and lucky to be able to work with those guys and you know the application process i think we started it about nine hours when we first put it on and then by the end of the shoot, we got it down to about seven. Um, and it was just fascinating to me, you know, just little details like he has, Vecna has these, um, these tendrils. And for me, you know, that, that sort of harks back to Predator. And I'm really interested in those kind of things. You know, the hand of Vecna, as we all know from D&D, &D, is a real thing. But like also that harks back to like Freddy Krueger. And that's really cool as well. So 
as a fanboy, there's all these like little details that I see in the making of this 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 suit that, that really just fascinate me. Um, and you know, Barry, Duncan, Mike McCash, Nix, Eric Garcia. You know, I was with these guys every day in the trailer, starting at about 3 a.m. and we became this beautiful team. It was great. I loved it. And then you know, the sort of madness of it, the personal madness of doing my own work. You know, that's. That's something we don't need to go too far into, but I, I love that. I love that too. Yeah. So you're in the suit now, and now you're Vecna. What makes Vecna so terrifying? I think what makes him so terrifying is that he's a real person. You know, you're not dealing with some sort of like monster from the deep. This is a real human who has his own experience or their own experience, um, and he's got his own intention, and that intention is very, very, very real. Um, you know, it, it's it, when you're dealing with something, I think, both as an actor or as a character that stood right in front of you, the fear is just apt tenfold. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I, and I, and humans, I think, by their very nature, are, uh, you know, we're not necessarily the easiest people to read, and that's quite terrifying alone, you know. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, his humanity, yeah. That right. and the squelching noises he makes. Oh, know. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so are there uh, any... What are you working on? What's, what's coming up? What's next? So I have a film coming out in January uh, called A True Haunting, um, based on uh, a story about a young couple in 1970. It's a true story. Um, they moved into a house in, uh, in Chicago and the house was haunted. Uh, they had a young baby and the house and the sort of entities living there or the sort of whatever it is that's out there, you know, still in that house was trying to uh, basically take this child away from them. Um, so I have that coming out and then I'm about to go and work on a film with Kevin Costner of Waterworld. I've... <laughs> Some of you aren't old enough to remember Waterworld, but trust me, if you've seen it, yes, if you haven't, go watch it. Um, so that's, that. we're doing that in October, so that's in, I'm literally going there in like three weeks. Um, and then I'm working on music, um, and yeah, and then more things from there. It's exciting. So we're gonna, thank you. We're gonna go to some questions from the audience here in a minute, so uh, if, uh, we got my guy with the microphone, he's gonna run out of fire. But before we do that, as an actor, you've delivered lots of lines. I'm sure at one point there was one line that you still to this day can't believe you got wrong over and over and over again that will never leave your skull. You... I, do you know what, darling? I don't think I've ever got anything wrong. <laughs> what? <laughs> that... Best answer I've ever got to that question. <laughs> no, really, I mean, I love what I do so much and I feel I have this massive imposter syndrome whenever I'm working. So I work so hard on making sure that like I know everything that I can do. I don't think there's ever been a this sometimes there's been a bit of dead air. So like when an actor has said their line and all of a sudden everything goes quiet and you go, oh fuck it's me. Shit. <laughs> That's always a terrifying experience. Uh, and then you get to do it again, so you're fine. <laughs> but I've never, I don't think I've ever sort of said something wrong over and over again. I've seen other actors do it and it's painful. <laughs> Especially in that suit you took eight hours getting into. You're like, yeah. can we please get through this so I can take this off? It wasn't on Stranger home. Things, it wasn't on the show. <laughs> All right, where's our first question? Right over there. Sure, you got it, sir. Okay. Hello. Um, I wanted to know, since you started acting at 19, was there any barriers or limitations since in this industry it's usually you like to start earlier rather than later? I, sorry, I can't hear you very well. I'm oh. so overwhelmed by the experience. Since you started at 19 years old acting, how was it coming into the industry? Were there any limitations in regarding your age? Um. So, I was very fortunate at the beginning of my career to land myself in this amazing Tim Burton film, Sweeney Todd. Um, thank you. 
Uh, <laughs> I didn't film it. Uh, when, you know, after I did that, I think I was also fortunate enough that the industry didn't go, cool, let's take this kid and let's make this kid into the next thing or the next big thing. I really had to kind of prove myself. So I went from doing this amazing Tim Burton film to doing a Dutch war movie in, you know, a foreign language Dutch war film. Um, and so I had the opportunity to really kind of cut my teeth. And I'll be honest with you, I still feel like I'm doing that now. Yeah, I still feel like every time I'm going into another job, I'm still having to push myself. I don't think I'll ever get to the point where I will be satisfied enough to sit back and feel comfortable. I think in every moment I'm trying my best to be the best possible version of an actor that I can be. That being said, there's a strange period uh, in any actor's life at around 25, 26, 27, 28. You're not young enough to play the teen and you're not old enough to play the dad. Um, so there's that space and that time that you really have to kind of fill yourself creatively. You've now got me thinking, so I'm going to continue. Sorry. I've also had experiences where I've had years where work has been amazing, where I've worked on three different projects. It's been fantastic. You know, I've felt very comfortable. It's been awesome. I've also had years where there's been nothing. It has been bone dry. And it's often in those years that I think to myself, this is a challenge. This is something out there is challenging me to say, how much do you love this? Because if you love this enough, you will ride through this crappy period of time and you'll come out the other side and something will be there waiting for you. But don't give up, basically. So, uh, you know, a career, I think often we see careers from the outside and they do this, right? It's not the case. It's, it's constantly like this. And any, any older person will always tell us that. When we're young, we go, ah, fuck it, shut up, you know, I'm going to be the best, amazing, most amazing thing in the world, but it's true. It's always like this. So if you love something, stick with it, stay with it. It's not always going to be easy. That's, that's my experience, anyway. Right over here. Hi, Jamie. Hello. So my question for you is, if you were a character from SpongeBob, which character would you be and why? Oh my goodness. Um, I can, I can probably range between three. Sandy, SpongeBob himself, because I can be dead annoying. I love him, but he can be a bit of a bit annoying. And sometimes I can be Squidward. Uh, I think we've all got a bit of Squidward inside of us. <laughs> there you go. Hi, Jamie. Hi. Um, so you've met a lot of famous people on your journey. Is there anyone that you were nervous to meet and anyone that you found very influential? Anyone that I was nervous to meet and anyone that I found influential? Oh my goodness. I, do you know I was really nervous to meet Millie? <laughs> That's really sad. She was like 16 when I met her and I'm like, oh my god. I'm like a 30 year old man. Pull it together. Um, and influential you, by the way, Millie's amazing. Like, she's just the sweetest, most beautiful person. Love her. Influential, you know, I, a lot of actors I've worked with have been very influential. I, I, I mentioned Ian McKellen earlier. Incredibly influential on me as a young man. Um, also, Millie. You know, I, I saw that, that human being walk onto set at 17, 16 years old and Everyone loves her. She's amazing. She's so creative. She's so talented. Everyone listens to her. She's just... I'll tell you something. I, I, was, I was sat one day um, in one of, the, one of the like numbered rooms whilst Millie, whilst Marty Blair, who plays the younger version of Mills, was doing a scene. And, um, and, and Matt and Ross were directing Marty 
and, and it, it, to me it looked amazing. I was like, this looks fantastic, but something, you know, some, they, they wanted something extra. And Millie comes in, out of the blue, just all of a sudden, and she tells, she says to Marty, she like looks her dead in the eye, has her hands on her shoulders, and sort of gives her this guidance, and they do the take, and it's perfect. And I was like, I was like, buzzing. I was like, holy shit, that's a child. Like, that's a 17 year old child, what's going on? So that, you know, I, I find her very, very influential and, 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 and inspiring, very inspiring. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, so my question is, um, <laughs> being in the industry as long as you have, it's understandable that there'd be some discrepancy between who you really are as a person and how you see yourself versus um, what the public perceives you to be. So basically what my question is, how do you feel about the version of yourself within your fans' minds? What do you see me as? <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like, <laughs> thank you, I, not an angel, not always. Um, I, I have always strived to be publicly and in my work unashamedly who I am. I don't feel like there's a version of me that is presented that is false now, in my 30s. I remember being working when I was younger as a teen and going to an audition and wearing like, I was either wearing like really skinny jeans or uh, like some sort of like tracksuit. And someone I was working with at the time called me up and was like, or called someone else I was working with up and said, he can't wear that. He can't go to an audition and wear that. And I was like, why the fuck not? Why not? This is who I am, and like, if you want, if, if somebody wants me to be the best version of a performer and, and of, as an actor, then I'm gonna be myself. And I've worked hard enough, I think, now to make sure that creatively and personally, the things that I put out there are me. So I don't necessarily feel like there is a false version of of who I am. Really, I mean, we're all sensitive. We're all beautiful souls floating through the galaxy of space and time, man. Um, but artistically, the things that I do and the things that I talk about, they're, they're, they're who I am. And I try to make sure that I'm presenting that at all times. All right, we have time for one more question, and then we're gonna get you to your photo ops and signing. So final question is right back there. TV related or movie related question, but this is more a question about music from artist to artist. What is your best advice for music artists to get into the music industry? What is my advice to a music artist to get into the industry? Do it yourself. Um, I, I started playing music independently. Um, I did it when I was 17, 16, 17, I played drums in like an indie band in London. And I created this other band, Counterfeit, did that all independently, thank you. And, uh, and then we got signed to a major record label. And it was when we got signed to a major record label that shit became really fucking difficult. And, right? <laughs> And now I'm back working independently with a cool group of an amazing team of people who I love, who I respect. Um, and I would say, tap into you, do you. There is nothing more beautiful and there is nothing that resonates with human beings more than when they see something that is pure and something that it is true. And I have lots of music artist friends who are incredibly successful, who are not on a major label, they're just doing it themselves, but it's resonating with people. So my advice is, do you push yourself as far as you can 
physically and mentally go. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself, but like, you know, dig in. And from there, the beauty and the truth will come. And success is, success is what you define it to be. Is success financial gains or is success being able to wake up in the morning and go, man, that thing that I did yesterday or that thing that I put out last night, I'm so proud of. I don't care if two million people listen to it or 10 people listen to it. It doesn't bother me, but it was who I am. Um, so that's my advice. That's my advice to you. This has been a wonderful time, man. Looking for, I'm, I'm really looking forward to get to know you more throughout the weekend. So, I mean, that's, it's really great. I'm sure everyone here uh, will do as well. So I want all of you to do me a favor. I all of you up on your feet, right where you are. And then I want you to just turn around right here. Turn around. Stand right here, turn around. And I want you all to lose your ever loving mind on the oh. count of three. Yeah, we're doing a big... Great. Here we go, everybody. One, two, three. It's been so nice to That's see you all today. Great. I'll see you all later. Thank you. Thank you.